Okay, so this is just showing how to do some analysis on some uh, MTT data for the Cell Biology Lab. So this is all of the data in Excel. So all we're going to do is copy that out, open up Stats Direct. So this software is only available in 757. Okay. new data workbook okay and then just paste your data there so this is MTT data it uh, we're going to assume it's non normally distributed and we're going to do a Kruskal Wallace on there if it was normally distributed we would do an ANOVA so we've highlighted the data that we want to analyze if we go to analysis non-parametric Kruskal Wallace and then click on run this is telling us that there's something significantly different but it doesn't tell us what click on run and then scroll to the Conover Inman test and what we see is that that is significant we can see that between 0 and 1 are significantly different those are significantly different those are significantly different and so are those okay okay if you wanted to do an ANOVA so if this was normally distributed data go back to your data it's all been highlighted Let's go to analysis parametric um, oh no sorry not parametric go to analysis of variance um, one way and what this will do is look at again all of the same comparisons 0 to 1 0 to 5 0 to 10 0 to 20 and so on so they're the ones that we're interested in we're not interested in those really and that's showing that they are all significant so you can just copy this text out paste it into your paste it into your um, Excel spreadsheet and you've just got a permanent record of, of the ANOVA result okay so we're going to select the wells where those values are which are those values so they've now appeared at the bottom click OK uh, we need a title so if we click on layout chart title if you want to put it there effect of X on Y as determined by Z you should know what X Y and Z are um, we shall have a axis legend FCS will do other axes horizontal uh, vertical axis let's have the rotated one so this will be abs uh, absorbance at 570 okay and then to make your graph look nice increase the text size so that it's nicely proportioned so that when you copy it out into a word document the text isn't too small um, anything else needed on that graph Oh, your significant stars so when you go back to your data when we look at our Kruskal Wallace Conover Inman one naught versus one is significant to one star that'd be three stars that'd be one star that'd be three stars so we can just insert those are the text box not like that insert text box so I'll have one star there make it nice and big show the glory of a significant result with a nice big star uh, I'm just copying and pasting that so I think it was there So 
So this one, for some reason, was three stars, and this one was three stars. Okay, and then you've got a very nice looking graph. Don't want to do that. Don't want to do that. I wanted to uh select it format data series fill and make it nice and black. Just my personal preference. Okay, so you've now got a pretty nice looking graph. So the sorts of graphs that you want to do would be a graph like this for your MTT data. Um, your flow cytometry data is a little bit trickier. So let's go G1, S, G2, make up some numbers, 80, 70, uh, 10, 15, 10, 15, okay, so we can make a graph of that, insert, uh, on this one we want to add two different series, so insert, column, so I'm just inserting the first series which is um, the plus fetal calf serum. And the second series is going to be minus fetal calf serum. So, it didn't like that. So, that's going to be control, that's going to be fetal calf serum. Okay. So, what we need to do is now is add in a second series. So if I right click and go to select data, I can add a series, which is going to be called fetal calf and I can add the data values which is that one that one and that one press return and we've now got our second series appeared on the graph I can edit the first series not that one that one call that control and I can edit these data labels as you should know they're g1 comma S phase, comma, G two M. Okay. And we've now got a beautiful graph. If you've got multiple data sets like from your class data, you can have a mean and standard deviation on them. So you can add those in just like I've shown before. Uh, and then you can do your statistics tests on this. It's probably worth just doing a T not a T test, a Man Whitney between the two data points for G one phase. So if you've got some class data, let's let's pretend you've got some nice data like this. I'm just going to make up some numbers that you can do a Man Whitney test on. Uh, 77, let's say uh, 70. So fairly realistic data. This is G1 from your control and your FCS treated cells. So we copy that into Stats Direct. Uh, I'll get rid of that. So just highlight those two wells. Analysis. Um, Non-parametric Man Whitney. So Man Whitney is like a, a non-parametric version of a t-test. Click on that and it will give us some data and what it is saying is based on a two-sided test uh, we have a p-value of less than 0 0.05 so that would be one star on your graph. That's the one that we're dealing with because you were not to know whether it was going to be increased or decreased you were asking is there a difference and there is indeed a difference between that, which means that you could put on your graph a one star. So we can copy that data into here. Okay, so we've got our data. 
and we can move this graph to a new chart so we can start playing with it and we now know that we can put a text box with a significant star there and just to be sure um, and just to be sure what we're talking about we're saying that that compared to that are significantly different so let's make it black um, so solid line, lines make it nice and thick. Okay, so that's telling us that between G1 in your control in your FCS group, you've got a significant difference. Okay, so that's looking like a reasonable graph. You can then finish it off and make it look a little bit prettier.